So the cosine rule then. So I, again, I'm going to drop the perpendicular down to create the cosine rule. And uh, I'm going to call that little bit there x. Now I could use Pythagoras. h squared would equal b squared minus x squared. Uh, c squared would be h squared plus, well, that other bit then must be a minus x. So a minus x squared. If I substitute in b squared minus x squared for h squared, I come up with the, the formula that actually is the cosine rule. How do I know it's the cosine rule? Well, x over b would be the cosine of c. So I could now substitute in for x, b cos c, and there's our rule. So the cosine rule is basically Pythagoras' theorem, but it's been extended out to other triangles than right angle triangle. If it was a right angle triangle, then that angle c would be 90 degrees, and the cosine of 90 is zero. So you just get c squared is a squared plus b squared. So that's when the angle is not 90, we have that additional bit of the cosine rule. So a squared is b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a, but it could have been b squared is a squared plus c squared. It could have been c squared is a squared plus b squared. The angle matches the side that you're trying to find. So it's always the angle matches the side you're trying to find. Let's do an example. So for this one, if I want to find t, t squared will be f squared plus m squared minus 2fm cos t. Substitute in. Calculator work. Don't forget to press the square root button though. A common mistake is to go and do that calculation because that calculation is t squared, it's not t. And people forget to do the square root and come up with a, well, a bigger answer than they need to. So in this case, we get eight. Where we're finding the angle. Now, some people like to memorize a cosine rule for finding the angle. Some people just remember the one cosine rule and rearrange it if we're finding the angle. So I'll go that way. Uh, so f squared for this would be a squared plus s squared minus 2as cos f. If I made cos the subject, I'll get a squared plus s squared minus f squared over 2as. Now, if you are the sort of person that would just go straight to that formula, it's always minus the side that is opposite the angle you're trying to find. So we're trying to find f, so it's minus f squared on the top. And then on the bottom of the fraction, it's the two sides that were positive. So it's 2as on this one. Substituting, that calculator answer will give me what cos f is. So to find f, I'd have to do inverse cos, and we get, and in this case, the cosine rule will find obtuse angles. So that's a bit nicer with the cosine rule. We don't have to worry about, hey, is it obtuse or not? It will find out for us straight away. Now, this one here, you'd look at it and go, well, I wanna use the sine rule. Oh, hang on, I've only got one angle, so that's no good. Oh, well, I'll use the cosine rule. Oh, hang on, the side I'm trying to find is not opposite to the angle that I, I have. Hmm, you can still use the cosine rule, though. I would put it in terms of A because A is the angle that I know. So A squared is B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. And I'll substitute for that. Remember, it's B that we're trying to find. Well, I've got a quadratic equation. I've got to play around with it a bit, but that actually is a quadratic equation. There we go, I'll rewrite it. B squared minus 14B cos 25 plus 40 is equal to zero. So I know B will equal negative, well, negative, negative becomes a positive, 14B cos 25 plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over two. I get two possibilities. But here's the thing, I don't know which one's the answer. I don't know which one's the answer, unless they give me more information. It's actually possible to construct two triangles with those dimensions. One where B is 5.85, another where B is 6.85. So unless they were to give me more information, I don't know which one of the two triangles they're talking about. So I give both possibilities. I give both. All right, an HSC one. A 3D trig question. Let's just read through this question here. David is in a life raft. And there's their little picture of a life raft down there. Anna is in the cabin cruiser. Now, I don't know if I think too much about their scale, but anyway, look at the size of the life raft compared to the cabin cruiser. David tells Anna, who has um, changed the way she spells her name, that he can see Mount Hope. That's right, so Anna's trying to find him. And uh, he says, oh, I can see Mount Hope. But fortunately, David's got some instruments with him and he can tell that the bearing of Mount Hope is 109 degrees. 
Lucky brought those <laughs> instruments with him in his little life raft. Oh, and he can also work out the angle of elevation. And uh, that's 16 degrees. Whew, that was lucky. But guess what? On that cabin cruiser, Anna, who's fixed up the way she spells her name, also has those instruments, and she can tell that her bearing's 139 degrees, and the angle of elevation is 23 degrees. Find the distance and bearing of the life raft. All right, so we've got a three-dimensional problem. Let's pull it out into some two-dimensional faces. So I've got one triangle there, HDB. We know the uh, height of Mount Hope was 1,500 metres, angle of elevation 16, so I've got that one. Uh, I've got another one with Anna. Uh, the only difference there is the angle of elevation was 23 degrees. We know that. Now, we knew some bearings. So I'm going to put a compass at D for David. And the bearing to Mount Hope, he said, was 109 degrees. Now, Anna, her bearing was 139 degrees. So we can create another triangle. So we want to work out, what was it, the distance... Well, that would be the length of the green line I've put there, AD, and the bearing, which would be the one I've labelled theta there. It's all the way around. They're the bits of information we need to find. Okay, let's do some work. Well, let's play around with those right angle triangles. BD, that's going to be 1510, 74. And AB, in the same way, I could work out as 1510, 67. So we can put that on our diagram. So what have I got? I've got two sides. I want to find a third side. Have I got an angle in there that we can work out? Let's put a compass over there at Mount Hope. Now what do we know? We know that blue arc is 139 degrees. Uh, I could do a bit of geometry and work out some stuff. So NDB plus DB, what I've labelled N double dash, well, they're going to create co-interior angles. We know they add up to 180. Uh, so playing around with that, we get that DBN double dash is 71 degrees. And I could do the same thing to find ABN double dash. It would turn out to be 41 degrees. Now, from there, DBN is made up of ABD and ABN. So that tells me that ABD is 30. So back to our diagram. There it is, 30. All right, well, I think we've got enough there. We can use the cosine rule on that triangle now and work out what B is. So, woo, B squared is 1,500 squared, 10 squared, 67, plus 1,500 squared, 10 squared, 74, minus 2 times 1,500, 10, 67 times 1,500, 10, 74, cos 30. Wow. Bit of calculator work, but there we go. We get it to the nearest meter, 2,799 meters. Okay, we know how far apart they are. Now for the bearing. Well, we know that blue angle we've marked in is 139. If I can find angle B, A, D, add that on, we'll have the bearing that we want. I'm going to use the sine rule. That answer that I got for B, story in the calculator, because we want to use the exact value, not our rounded off value. Play around with that. So the sine of angle D, A, B, 1510, 74, sine 30, divided by that answer we've got stored in our calculator for B. We get two possibilities because it's a sine rule. I don't know if it's acute or obtuse. Which one is it going to be? Well, if I assume it's the acute one, then BDA would end up being 80 degrees 51. But we know DAB has to be bigger than BDA if we look at our diagram. So therefore, it must be the other one. It must be the 110 51. So back to our diagram, there it is. That angle has to be obtuse, it has to be 110.51. So our bearing, add them together, we end up with 249.51. I would imagine in the HSC that particular year, a lot of people would have got 69 degrees 9 on their calculator, and they would have just blindly accepted that answer, because they go, oh, my calculator tells me it's this. So that's the angle that I'm going to use. Didn't even consider that, hang on, it might be an obtuse angle. All right. Here we go, 6J, 6K, 